Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here, and I'm back with another Open Core Legacy Patch Year update video for two hot fixes that have happened over the last two days that have caused a couple issues with a few users. And we got to talk about the situation and what you need to do when you're looking to update to 2.1.2. Let's jump in and get started. So what happened was, is that over the past two days, we've had multiple releases. First started with 2.1.0 last week, and that was pretty solid. And that included the new option to save the retention settings in the GUI. If you watch my 2.1.0 video, I went over all that and how that whole new system works, and it's fantastic. The only problem is, is that a couple users found out with some additional testing, and some of those GUI settings were conflicting and not not saving correctly. So 2.1.1 was released to fix that issue two days ago. But what was found out after that fix, some of those settings were saving incorrectly and then causing problems with the EFI partition with the bootloader, causing the Mac not to be able to boot but that is now fixed with 2.1.2. And I want to make it clear really quickly here that this is open source software and you know that, but there's only a very small handful of developers trying their best to get a great product out. Apple, Microsoft, Google, they all have these issues and that's why they have patches that come out all the time too that has a ton of fixes. I think we can set those expectations and most all the viewers and you listening to this video already understand that. But there was a couple of people that were getting upset about like hey how did how could this happen we are all human here and the developers have done an amazing job putting this software together and i'm telling you right now 99.9 .9 .9 of all the people that use this software are happy with it sure there's a couple issues here and there but it's a brand new operating system so coil just came out Again, I don't even really need to say this to most people that are watching this. You guys understand that. We still want to be able to go over what's going on so you have a better understanding and full transparency. And that's all here. All the information that's happened over the last few days is right up here. And the issues were fixed as quickly as possible from feedback directly from the community. So now let's get a little bit of a deeper dive into what's fixed in 2.1.2. So we've got multiple test machines here because I don't want you to get caught up in a situation where you're getting these type of messages and you're wondering, should I even update? Should I keep the old version on? What should I do? And even if you get into a situation where your EFI did get corrupted, we were helping a couple people on the Open Core Legacy Patch or Discord today rescue their devices when this happened. And again, we're talking a very small amount of users that triggered this. Most people installed it just fine. You'll see in the comments, some people did have issues. And I read those comments in my 2.1.0 video. And some of the users reported that to the Discord. All four of these machines here were installed with not a single problem, no booting issues whatsoever. But that's all repaired now. So let's get back to our main device to talk about the 2.1.2. Okay, so what were those settings? We talked about this in 2.1.0 update video. The settings that we're talking about are in the Open Core Legacy Patcher settings section here by clicking the settings button. Any of the settings here will now stay because there, any change that is being made is being written to the Open Core Legacy Patch or PLIS or settings file. That setting file, again, if you do Command Shift G to go, is located in Users, Shared, and then Dortania Open Core Legacy Patcher PLIS file. This is a hidden file, so you have to have hidden files shown, or you can directly navigate to this file. That's what is modified, so we can actually see that live here. If we change this boot picker to 15 seconds for this Mac Pro, and then we hit return, there you go. Edited today at 11.28 p.m. So that's how that setting saving system works. If you wanted to reset these settings back to default, so we go back in there, it'll be 10 again or 15, we set it to 15. All you need to do is click on return and delete this. Right click on this and hit move to trash. If you wanna show hidden files, it's command shift period to show the hidden files, same thing. Then when you open the application again, it'll be reset to five, all these settings will be reset. In the future, the developers have mentioned that there will be like a reset, maybe a reset button here to reset all these back 
to default, but this is how it's set for now. But the bottom line is, is that with 2.1.2, all these settings now are saved properly and there's no issues here. Now let's go over to our other Mac here to take a look at that, what actually happened. Now on our Mac mini, what would happen was is that the EFI, this is the EFI partition. If you look at the disk layout here, the EFI partition is right here. This is where open core is written to. If we look at that and we mount that disk zero S one, here. Normally you'll just see Apple and the firmware in here. We can go drill all the way down to the firmware file for this Mac mini, but where all the open core stuff is stored in this open core folder. And we can see this is the layout for the supported system. And what was happening was, is that it was writing a blank EFI folder. So what would happen was, is that when the user rebooted, they had no bootloader to be able to boot to. So they were stuck in a pretty difficult situation if you got caught in there we'll go over that a little bit later at the end of the video and how you could rescue your mac if you're ever in that situation now let's talk about you getting your mac updated to 2.1.2 if you are doing a new build 2.1.2 is fine if you want to update to 2.1.2 that is totally fine too and i recommend it because you do not want to set those settings incorrectly and have problems with the efi settings in your bootloader so i recommend getting to two 2.1.2 the key here is is that the only fix is inside the application itself so you don't necessarily have to install the bootloader efi and the root patches but that's why i brought this system along to show what happens if you decided to just install the latest version here but not install build and install the new version open core 2.1.2 you're going to get a message like this that says hey we detected that you have a newer version of open core legacy patcher 2.1.2 but you only booted an EFI with version 2.1.1. Do you want to update open core bootloader? So if you don't want to get that message every time, it's easier just to update the bootloader here with the latest version and then the post through patches too. And then everything will be updated and you'll be right back to normal. So let's go through that now. We'll click download and install and we'll walk through that ABC process or one, two, three really quick. If you haven't seen this part already with the latest update. Okay, we're installing the update. This demonstration back here we're on is our 15 inch 2017 with the touch bar and the T1 security chip. So we'll be making sure that we get that installed okay. Okay. So the application is updated at 2.1.2. We're gonna build and install the root patches to our bootloader. Now what's nice about the new saved settings update for 2.1.0 and above is that previously when I would just click this or you would just, or previously when you would just click this, it would do all of the default settings again. So if you wanted to set your boot picker to 15 seconds for your Mac Pro, this would re just reset it back to five. So we can test that by just clicking no, and then going back into the settings and it should say 10, the, what we set it to before. And it is, that's why this new feature is so great because now when it automatically comes up and says, hey, you gotta update open core bootloader and it's all the post root patches, all the settings are gonna be from what you had set them before in the app and they are maintained there through that plist file in the user shared folder. So we're gonna follow through and we're gonna do that automatically like it wanted to do before, but it's gonna set that to 10 seconds, just like we said right here. So we're gonna click install the disk and our hard drive and our EFI. Done. Since we skipped the normal process, normally here would say, would you like to install the root patches with the new version? We're gonna click ignore here and we're gonna go back to the main menu and go do that now. And that would be the ABC and one, two, three process. And you can see that the last time we patched was version 2.1.1 and we're doing AMD Polaris, Modern Wireless and T1 security tip. Let's root patch with 2.1.2. Now keep in mind, there's no changes in here, but it does update the version to 2.1.2 because all those changes were inside the application itself, but we're gonna be updated across the board now. And that's what I recommend doing. I don't recommend just installing the app so you're fully up to date on all three parts of the patcher. Now for the people that had had some issues today, again, that's why I always recommend having a backup of your system. Things are gonna happen. And again, I, I'm gonna talk about like this, like I already did, even with Microsoft, Google, and Apple, 
Sometimes even the production supported systems have issues with Mac OS updates or Chrome OS updates or Windows updates. You need that backup. So I always recommend, again, keeping that backup just in case something goes wrong, you're always prepared and have your data backed up. Even when something goes wrong with the patcher, the data is usually always there on the drive itself. Usually this, there's a problem with booting, black screen, progress bar stuck, but the data is still there. So don't jump in and erase your disk if you really need that data. You can get to that through recovery and you can get to that data and need it if we can fix that later. So that, just keep that in mind. Let's reboot and all three steps will be complete. Okay, we're back up and I like to do that optional fourth step is to go into the patcher and check those root patcher settings to make sure we're on the latest version. And then we can see that we are on 2.1.2, November 6, 2024. So we are good to go on 2.1.2. Finally here, I want to go over if you get into a situation where you had updated to 2.1.1 or 0 and you had a corrupted EFI and your system wouldn't boot or you didn't even see the, the EFI boot loader, then your system's still there, but we need to fix that. And the way to do that is that you can boot into recovery or internet recovery and then go into disk utility once you're in there. Once in disk utility, the idea is, is that in a, if you have another Mac, all you need to do is build open core to the version, for example, this 15 inch 2017 model, you would set the model inside here in settings. You would set the model to the host model here and then build open core on your USB. You can then boot into the operating system and apply and build open core back to your main drive after updating to 2.1.2 and then you're fixed. But if you don't have a second Mac where you're able to do that, that's where you got to boot into internet recovery and then click on view and show all devices. Click on the top level drive, click on partition, and you wanna add a second partition here. Not a volume, a partition. You wanna separate those containers. So we would hit add partition like this, and then you would name, I'm already dual booting Sequoia and Sonoma. So you would name this whatever that you wanted, and then you would build like Mac OS Catalina or whatever operating system on there. You would have to have at least Mac OS High Sierra at a minimum to be able to fix that. Once that's installed, you would boot to that supported OS and then build and install open core in there onto your EFI that is broken and you're good to go. If you need help doing that, let me know in the comments and we can maybe get you walk through there. But I'm hoping there's not that many people. It's, again, there's a very small amount of people who did get caught up on this. But let me know in the comments. Did you run into problems? Did you install the updates to OK and everything's OK? Let me know. Also, I wanted to do... Again, I sound like a broken record, but I'm going to say this to the end of time. McCola, Dina K, Edu Kavas, Ostow Sportler, and all of the people on the Open Core Legacy Pastor Discord who donate their time to help other users. You guys are absolutely fantastic, and I cannot say enough nice things about you. And we appreciate all the work that you do for us to keep our old Macs running and up to date. Thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.